Lights out. Everybody. stories of the supernatural and the supernormal, dramatizing the fantasies and the mysteries of the unknown. We tell you this frankly, so if you wish to avoid the excitement and tension of these imaginative plays, we urge you calmly, but sincerely, to turn off your radio now. Prophecy is an easy thing. For rarely is the prophet brought to judgment. Tonight I bring you a false prophecy. A play set at this hour, yes, one minute after ten Eastern peacetime, but the years have moved onward to the number of fifty-five. The place of our story is a great rocket speeding away from the moon. Yes, away. For the first trip to the moon has finally taken place, and a triumphant airship is now rapidly returning to the Mother Earth. Here, then, is a story about a tomorrow 55 years hence, September 20th in the year of our Lord, 2000, on board a rocket ship. A play that is, I sincerely hope, a very false prophecy. <laughs> There's a great deal of work to be done. Work's over, Doctor. 24 hours more and we're back. Yes, Doctor. We'll be back. We've done it. Complete. In 24 hours. If you're worried about our landing, I'm not. You worried, Reynolds? No, sir. Everything's in perfect order. Sure, Doctor. There's going to be a round trip. Anyway, there's 24 hours before we have to worry about that. Yes, Doctor. It's a time for celebration. Oh, I'm glad to be alive, boys. I'm glad to be alive. I'm riding on a rocket train, and soon I will arrive. Reynolds, oh, Mr. Reynolds. Are you men out of your minds? You, Major Russell. Reynolds is still a boy, but you're a mature man. Please act mature. Oh, but doctor. I'll grant you that our adventure has gone well. Well is right. We've been to the moon. My congratulations, Reynolds. Thank you, Major. Thank you. I'll put the medal on my other chair. Will you men listen to me? We're 48,000 miles from the earth. And headed right for it. We're not there yet. Doc, pardon the expression, but you're a gloomy Joe. I am a realist. But doctor, the possibilities of anything going wrong are remote. Surely we're entitled to relax a little and relish the fact of what we've done. Yeah, we've done it, Doc. Even if we never get back, we've done it. We've been to the moon, and it'll always be there on the books. I'm not interested in becoming an historical fact, Major Russell. The data we've collected, that's my only interest. May I ask you and Reynolds to get back to your post? Oh, but everything's going like clockwork. Look at the gauges. But we are out of radio contact with the Earth. Yes, sir. But we are on course. Doc, what is wrong? Wrong? What should be wrong? Oh, no, the kid's right, Doc. Ever since we made the circle and started back, all these days you've been acting as if we didn't make it. We've gone 243,000 miles, and we're three-quarters of the way back, and we're in, Doc. We're in. So what's the matter with you? 
How old were you, Major, when the Second World War ended? Oh, about five. What's that got to do? And you, Reynolds, you weren't even born. No, sir. I was 21 on that day in New Mexico when they set off the first chain reaction. 21. Doc, you mean to say you were in at the beginning of it? Well, of course he was. And Dr. Chamberlain was one of the original research men in the atomic bomb project back in 45. The only one of them alive today. Well, what do you know? So that's why you wanted to make this trip, Doc. I mean, you... Yes, Major. You wanted it as a substitution for what you missed as a boy. The excitement and glory of war. Oh, now, Doc, It's yes. true, and Reynolds here is young and idealistic. And the scientific wonder of it was what he wanted. And I... I was there at the birth of an era. Now atomic power is driving me into space, back to the Earth where it all began. And I'm thinking... Yeah, Doc? It's not pertinent to any of this. We have no time to discuss our emotions. There's work to be done. Interior temperature, uh, 68.2. Interior temperature, 68.2. Well, that's it. Yes? Any radio contact, Reynolds? No, sir. How about that, Doc? Unfortunate, but not very vital. We're definitely on course. How much longer will it be, Doc? Ten hours. At the most, ten hours. In the middle of LaGuardia Field. That's where I'd like to land. I hope not. Huh? Texas. Isn't that it? Sure, sure. We'll hit the flats right on the nose. If the auxiliary jets were... They worked on the moon. They'll work on landing. We're the good luck boys, Doc. We can't miss. <laughs> you have the optimism of a 16-year-old. Reynolds, you'd better get back to your radio. Try phone contact. Yes, sir. Major, check the jet temperatures. Uh, right jet, 1580. Right jet, 1580. Left jet, 1583. Left jet, 1583. Speed... 24832. Speed 24832. XR1 calling CQ. XR1 calling CQ. Hello, hello, hello. XR1 calling CQ. XR1 calling CQ. Hello, hello, hello. Any luck? No, sir. Put your transmitter back on automatic. Yes, sir. <laughs> Why do you laugh, Major? I was just thinking about how many millions of telescopes have turned in our direction. Yes? What you said a few hours ago. I mean, about my wanting the excitement and adventure. That's true, you know. I'm 60 years old, and I guess I just lived for this chance. The Army hadn't okayed my going. Well, here I am. Once we land, I'll admit, frankly, I'm going to cash in on every bit of it and have myself a time. You know something? I get the feeling kind of depressed when I think it'll soon be over. Well, there's no reason for depression, is there? I couldn't answer that. Why not? You've been wondering, undoubtedly, why ever since we left the moon, I've been acting strangely. That's right. I've never believed in predestination, and yet there's been sort of a motivation of faith in my life. At 21, I was part of that research team trying to adapt atomic power to military purposes. When that first bomb went off over the New Mexico desert, a newspaper man repeated the words... What hath God brought? And no one quite knew. I've been waiting 55 years for the answer. I think I found it a few hours ago on the moon. And it's an answer full of horror. Oxygen valve, that's why you're yawning. Oh, yes, sir. Two points? Two points. Well, the major's sure sleeping. Yes. It's only a few more hours, isn't it? Yes. Will we have to put on our compression suits the way we did on the takeoff? Yes, of course. 
Doctor, may... May I ask you something? Yes? Uh, before, you spoke of finding an answer on the moon. And, and then you didn't say any more. Well, I've been thinking about it. I was wondering if it was something that the Major couldn't understand. And that's why you didn't speak of it further. And now you want to know. Yes, sir. I... I haven't lived anywhere as long as you two have, but my life has been built around atomic power. My dad, he was one of your men. My, ever since I was a child, becoming a physicist like dad was and you are and Dr. Oppenheimer and all the rest, why, that was it. Now, all of a sudden, the way you spoke before, as if all our research has been criminal. Do you mean that? Do you... Collision. Radar. Get at it. What's the matter? What's the matter? Object approaching. Where? Where? Fifteen degrees west. There it is. Meteorite. It's a meteorite. It's all... Um... <sighs> that was the closest. Oh, it was indeed. Be sardonic indeed to collide with a meteorite at this point in our journey. I... I use a stronger word than sardonic, Doctor. Yeah, like faking. It's all clear. Well, I... I better get back to... No, my... Reynolds. Reynolds, you asked me a question before and I want to answer it. You too, Major Russell, and I want you to hear this. Sure. Reynolds overheard what I said to you. That I'd found the answer to a very old question on the moon. He said that he felt that somehow I thought all of the research on atomic power had been criminal. No, young man, I don't believe that. Not at all. Criminal to know more about a way of nature? No. The answer I, I found was something else. I hadn't even an answer, perhaps only a theory. When we came within a hundred miles of the moon and then began to de-accelerate, to turn back, what did we see through the observation ports? Well, Doc, we saw... No, just... please, let me tell you what I saw. The craters of the moon. Great, gigantic craters, and as we came closer and closer, the look of them was so familiar. Not because I had seen them through telescopes and in photographs, but for some reason that I, I couldn't quite understand. Craters of the moon, and suddenly, at the very moment when we'd come as close as we dared and our ship swung in an orbit to return, suddenly I knew. It was a memory of another crater I had seen 55 years before in New Mexico from an observation plane high over the ground a few hours after the first atomic bomb had lit the sky with a new sun. Yes. The crater in the crust of the earth that bomb had left was the same as the craters of the moon. Do you understand? The crater our bomb had left on the earth was the same as the craters on the moon. So what? I don't get it. Yes, Doctor. What are you getting at? The crater in that desert was a thousandth of the size of the ones you're talking about. I suddenly began to think. Was it not possible that the moon had gone through the same evolutionary processes as our Earth before our Earth? Yes. Wasn't it possible that men had come into being on the moon, developed their own civilization, had known scientific progress, even as we have, but long before we Earthmen had known it? Say, Doc! You do understand. These men of the moon had discovered the secret of atomic power long before we did, and then had used it to blast and to tear each other. Yes. And the craters on the moon, that terrible devastation, was the record of the destruction of their civilization. A final war, which had burned up the very atmosphere and left the moon a dead planet, circling endlessly through an airless sky. All right, Doctor. Presuming your theory is correct, that, that the moon men had started through a war, a, a chain atomic reaction that they couldn't stop, well, what of it? It indicates that they were fools. Yeah, that's it. Fools. Are we any wiser?
lady, too. You'd better cut it down. Right. How much? About 15%. Right. You get anything, Reynolds? No, sir. Would you come here a moment? Yes, sir. Will you help me with this port covering? Yes, sir. Either there. All right. Hey, try to take a look, huh? Yes, that's it. There she is. Mama Earth. Reynolds, the cameras? Yes, sir. How much should I run, Doctor? Put it on automatic exposure. Yes, sir. Six more hours, eh, Doctor? Or less. Sure we haven't made a mistake and headed for Venus. What are you? <laughs> that was just a bad joke, Doc. Well, there's no two ways about it. The outline of the continents, we can't make any mistake about that being our home address. I wonder how much they can see of us. Where are we, six, seven thousand miles out? You know, this reminds me of the time about 25 years ago. The Army sent me up to a thousand miles to take observation photographs. We remember how the atomic reaction motors were then. We got up about 500 feet and Nature. Up. What? What? Look down. Look. Hmm? What? Well, I don't see anything. Look, I tell you. Reynolds, come here. What's the matter? Something wrong? Well, the doctor says... There's Reynolds, a... look. You see? Yes. What is it? I see it, too. Bright lights going on and off. What's going on down there? Doctor, are they signaling us? Are they signaling? It's 6,000 miles. Why? Why should they? That's right. There's no such plan. Look at it. It is lights going on and off. But they're all from one area. Can you make out where? North America. Then they are signals. The candle in the window. Your own question. At 6,000 miles? Wait a minute. Are they explosions? Explosions? Major Doctor, is that it? Are they explosions? I don't know. CQ, CQ, hello, 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 CQ, CQ. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor, I can't raise any. Doc, Doc, come here. Yes, but look, the closer we get, they are explosions. Three more hours, we'll know. I want to know now. Reynolds, what's the matter with you? Why can't you make radio contact? I'm doing everything I can. Major. Major. Doc, what are the craters? Look. Craters. Craters? At this altitude, you couldn't possibly... After each flash, I do see them. Okay, okay, what does it mean? Well, what are you looking at me like that for? What does it mean? Dr. Major, something's coming through. Oh, well, about time. I, I can only hear it faintly. What? What? Please, let me listen. United States. What? Oh. Reynolds, what is it? Tell us. What? Boy, I... I couldn't quite make up. Oh, he, he said... Said what? Tell us. War. He said war. Blasting the United States off the face of the earth. Blasting. The, it, it's, not, it's a joke, isn't it? Isn't it? What are they sending now? What now? It began an hour ago. No warning. Projectiles radio controlled. Point of origin unknown. Oh, it stopped again, the transmission. That's enough. Where's the International Police Force? What's being done about it? Doctor! Doctor, did you hear it was an attack without warning? Who could it be? What's the idea? The explosions are increasing in frequency. Reynolds! Reynolds, is there anything more coming through? No, nothing. Yes. Yes, they started transmission again. All right, let's have it quick. Some station in Midwest. I can't get the call letters. Who cares? 
He says, it's hell. Ground shaking. No bombs landed near, but air reconnaissance. It's so garbled I can hardly make out. Well, well. It started an hour ago. Everything burning. Oh, it stopped again. There's nothing. Doctor? Doctor, in heaven's name, what do you think it's all about? Stop staring out of the window and talk to me. What are they doing? What do you mean, what are they doing? They're bombing us, blasting us. It's war, but who? We've got to find out. Reynolds, find out who. Why? It's no use. There's no transmission. Doctor, those bombs, where are they coming from? Can't you tell by the trajectory? At this distance? And what difference does the face of the enemy make? It, it, it's happening, that's all. Smashed them. I always said we should have smashed them. Exterminated them 50 years ago. Oh, they were so peaceful for so many years. And... The flashes are increasing in frequency. Settles, get on that radio. And I'll try again. I've got to know who, that devils. We had agreements with everyone. The international devils, all of them. I call them devils. I don't even know who they are. Reynolds! You got anything? No. No, I don't. Dr. Faster, let's get down there faster. Let's open it up. Well, you know better than that. We're entering atmosphere. Increase speed and we burn up like a meteorite. But I'm an army man. All my Nothing's life I've been coming trained. through. What? What? The bombs. Nothing can... I can hardly make it out. Keep at it. Panic. Paratroopers. Who? Who? Last message from United States of a... It's ended. There is no more. We get down there faster. Only 500 more miles. Look at it down there. Our Air Force, protective measures. What happened to them? What happened? Doctor, you, why don't you say something? We'll just sit there for hours watching. This isn't a scientific experiment going on down there. They're blasting us to pieces. Us, us. Your atomic bomb, the great secret. Hold it over the world and have peace forever. You said that. Yes, you. I was a kid then. I heard you say it over the radio when they gave you a medal. Hold it over the world and have peace forever. But well, what do you got to say now? We had a wonderful 55 years. What? Everybody had a wonderful time. Reynolds, what's the matter with him? He's gone. No. Let him finish. First, we hung the criminals 55 years ago. And as soon as their body stopped swinging, we left the crowd and each went back to his own house and shut the door. You said the peace would hold forever. I I said it because I thought that when the secret was put away, the people of the world would remember the terror. I, I said to myself, now, surely now that they've seen the possibility of the disintegration of their earth, they'll be drawn together once again into the, the family of men as it must have been in the beginning. I, I forgot what years could do. I forgot how quickly forgetfulness comes. I forgot that in only a few years, Hiroshima and Nagasaki would be only yesterday's sensations for a nation eager for sensations for today. You keep asking me who's sending those bombs against us. Who? I tell you, we're sending them against ourselves. Yes. Because had we made our way of life something more than a confused dream of shiny machines and happy endings, those bombs of hatred and revenge would not be flying at us. I said the peace would hold forever because I thought that out of that war at last men had learned that there was no defense against hatred and revenge, but the defense of education for the unity of people. It was a race, gentlemen, against time. And we wasted our last 55 years running backwards on a track of chromium and plastics. And so we've lost forever. No. We've never lost. Look, 
The blasts are increasing in frequency. There's nothing left. Nothing. We'll start someplace else. We'll build Doctor, it. look. The color of the blast. Oh, dear God. What? What? Doctor, it's nitrogen, isn't it? Nitrogen? What? The fools, the everlasting fools I've won. The blast. More and more. They started something they couldn't end. The color of the blast, they've set off hydrogen atoms. I, I don't know what you... We used uranium, plutonium, and when the initial blast was over, that was all. But hydrogen, that's part of life. One reaction sets off the other like setting off an endless chain until... Look down there. Blast. Faster and faster. They're spreading. The fools. God help the fools. God help the fools. <laughs> 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 A sheet of flame around the earth. Doctor, tell me, what is it? What was it? Tell me. It burned up all the atmosphere. Burned up? Reynolds, what does he mean? The chain reaction burned up all the air. Oh, my. Major, Major, the left jet. down there? There is no air, no life. The moon, the earth, the same. Uh. How much fuel? There's the gauge. Two, three hours? Yes. Yes, I think that's right. Isn't it, Major? Yeah. What? What do we do? You ask that question now? The Major no longer asks it. Do you know the answer, Major? Sure. We'll circle around. Then we'll crash. <gasps> no, 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 no. No, it'll be all right, my boy. My words again. Have peace. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.